Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. And we are going to be re-ranking the teams in the Sweet 16. We're going to go by groups of four and uh, just kind of talk through what this, 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 uh, this top 16 looks like. So we'll start with 16 through 13. Um, I think we all kind of agree uh, the 16th team in our poll. And for the record, this was... Uh, this was a bunch of us at the field of 68 all voted on uh, these teams, and this is the consensus. So if you have to blame anybody, you got to blame all of us. It's not just me. I'm not going to be the only one taking the heat for this one. Um, to be honest, it was just Kevin Sweeney. He was the one that put this together all by himself. So NC State fans, <laughs> Kevin Sweeney hates your program. Uh, we have them at 16, San Diego State at 15, Gonzaga at 14, and Clemson at 13. Um, Sweeney, any uh, anything here that you think is out of place? Yeah, I had Gonzaga a little bit higher. Uh, I think I had Gonzaga above Alabama, uh, so they were uh, in in, uh, in the top twelve. Like I, I think Gonzaga is playing like an elite team in college basketball right now. Like they have high level point guard play with Nemhard, uh, you know the post scoring with Ek. Guys are really fitting into their roles. Like I think Hickman and Ben Gregg have started to really play well. I think Gregg's ability to space the floor has really put a lot of pressure on defenses. And look, like I, like I said, I, I think this is a different Gonzaga team than the one that kind of hung but couldn't quite get over the hump against Purdue in November. And not to say that Purdue hasn't gotten better too, but like I'm not going to be shocked if if Gonzaga makes a push. Maybe I'm over overreacting to, to blowing out Kansas and you know a limping Kansas team. But I've been impressed with what I've seen from Gonzaga really for the better part of a month, two months. And so uh, I think this is a team that's probably more of a factor than people are giving them credit. Yeah, I don't know. Tyler. Yeah, I think Clemson, I would have them, uh, you know, I would have them as a, a better rank than this. I, I, I actually do think that Clemson has a higher ceiling than what most people think. I, I think the P.J. Hall kid, uh, I think he can play in the NBA. I think he's a dynamic big, and I think he's going to give some problems uh, to Arizona, especially if he can stretch and bring them out. And also in Shefflin, I think he makes winning plays, and he's one of those guys that really plays his role uh, and can make winning basketball plays. Joe Girard can, you know, you can rely on him. It's kind of the same things I've been repeating about Clemson, but also they have other athletes as well, and they have, uh, you know, big guards too. I love that you love Ian Shefflin so much. T.O. calls him your favorite coach's favorite player, um, and I guess he's uh, he's Tyler Hansbrough's favorite player too. So, uh, all right, let's get into the uh, that next group of four. Um, at 12, we had Alabama. At 11, we had Marquette. 10 Duke and nine, uh, the Creighton Blue Jays. I'm a little bit surprised that we have Marquette behind Duke, uh, Tyler. That one, that one, that one caught me a little bit by surprise. Um, I actually would have Marquette and Duke a little bit higher. Um, yeah, you know, Duke has a, you know, they do have a high ceiling. You said they got three guards that can get you 20. I believe that as well. Uh, Phil Opowski, you know what he said, the dynamic big. Uh, Kolick, Marquette. Those guys, they can get it rolling. Cam Jones, a very underrated player, apparently. Uh, didn't even make a Big East team, which is uh, laughable. Uh, but, yeah, I would have those two teams higher for sure. I'm with you on that. And Creighton, by the way, Creighton has always been my sleeper. I would have them in a top mm -hmm. eight team, potential title team as well. Sweeney? I mean, I do think on its face it's wild that a, a Duke team that – won its first two games in the tournament by 55 points is top is number six in the country. And Ken Palm is I think 10th or 11th. We just said in, in the sweet 16 re rank, maybe, maybe that's just because of where we ranked them. But I would also say this, that tells you how good the sweet 16 is going to be. Like if, if you want to make an advertisement for why Thursday and Friday are going to be elite college basketball, like that graphic and like where those teams are ranked with how good they are, that, that to me is the sales pitch. Yeah. Um, imagine uh, being one of these uh, media members that said that there's no interesting storylines and the the quality of basketball in college this year can't cut through the noise. huh? You know what? Maybe you should tune in to watch this Elite Eight. I think you might be impressed. Um, let's go to that next group of four. We have Illinois, Iowa State, Tennessee at six, and Arizona at five. My only gripe here is, is uh, one, Illinois behind Iowa State, and two, um, that Creighton did not crack the top eight i'm with you tyler i think that creighton is uh as good as we're going to find um outside of that top four 
in college basketball this year. I think that uh, I, I would make a pretty strong argument to get them up to number five. Um, Sweeney, how do you feel about the Blue Jays and their chances to win a national title? For the record, I think they are the team that is best built to be able to take down Purdue. Look, I, I don't hate that. I, I think this Creighton team, like, the depth to me worries me. But, like, when you see them weather the storm the way that they did against Oregon and play 50 minutes and they're not the ones that are tired, like, I mean, at some point, like, maybe it's not a huge concern. Maybe they can handle it. And we, we talk all the time, right? Like, guard play wins in March and defense wins in March. And they are a high-level you know, backcourt with, you know, Shireman and Alexander and, and even Ashworth, who's, you know, played better here in the last, you know, month and a half, two months. And, you know, defensively, what they do with Kalkbrenner is really special and gives you an opportunity to really win games. So, I mean, they have been like, I think every time Creighton has lost this year, for the most part, I've been shocked that they've lost. And maybe that's like, that's, that's a weird barometer for a good team. But like, in some ways, like, Every time you see a team lose and you're you're like floored that that result happened, I think that that sort of paints the picture for why you should believe in this Creighton team. And maybe maybe the consistency won't be there, right? Like the last time this team won six straight games, they haven't done it actually all season. I thought they did it to start the year. They only five and out. They haven't won six in a row all year. Maybe this is the time that they do it. But man, like it is hard to beat this Creighton team. Like you have to really execute at a high level to do it. Yeah. Um, the only other thing that I would add about that, that top, the, the, the five to eight is um, I feel like Arizona is the one team here where like their swings, Tyler are the highest where when they, when you get the good Kylan Boswell and you get really good Caleb love that you have a chance to be looking at a team that on any given night could be the best team in college basketball. I also think that you have, the, they're the one team here where you kind of look at them and, and say, Wow, you know what? I'm pretty surprised that they're uh, they didn't get upset at some point. Like you didn't just have that horrible night from Caleb Love and Kylan Boswell doing one of his no shows, and uh, you know it just they, they they are the toughest one for me in that group to be able to kind of slot into this ranking. Yeah, and believe me, uh, as a Carolina uh, guy, I know the Caleb Love roller coaster, and I know what he can do when he gets hot in the tournament. Uh, so I would say, yeah, their peak, their ceiling, they could definitely be a contender uh, if, if Caleb gets it rolling. And also they play big uh, so they can give teams some problems. They could dominate the inside. And when you have that combination going, I think it uh, it is an elite team and they can definitely be a contender. All right, let's get to this top four. No one is going to be shocked uh, at the four that we have or the order that it is. North Carolina at four, Houston at three, Purdue at two. UConn at one. Here's what I hit, want to hit you guys with on this. Um, Sweeney, I'll go to you first on this one. What is the likelihood that we end up with a Final Four that is all one seeds? We haven't seen that since, I believe, 2008, the first Final Four that Tyler actually played in. Um, can we see it again? Is that is there like a realistic opportunity that that is what's going to happen here? Look, I think there's a path. I, I, I think the one thing is that the bracket isn't just chalky with the one seeds. It's chalky with, you know, throughout with, the, with all the Sweet 16 teams. So the path is really challenging for, for a lot of these teams, right? Like, I mean, for UConn to have to play a, an Elite Eight game against Illinois or Iowa State, you know, conference tournament champions, that's incredibly challenging. So, look, I think, all, I think at least one one seed will lose. Like, I'd be surprised if we have a Final Four of them. But individually, it's hard for me to pick against any of those one seeds to, to not make it through their individual regions. Yep. Um, Tyler, the last time that we saw a an Elite Eight that had four number one seeds and four number two seeds was in 2019. We also had four number three seeds in that event. Uh, that year, North Carolina as a one seed lost to number five, Auburn. Um, Virginia as a one seed made the final four, won a national title. Gonzaga as a one seed lost to number three, Texas Tech in the Elite Eight. And then Duke as a one seed lost to number two seed, Michigan State. So we ended up with just one one seed in the final four that year. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.